Updating the metric of transportation impact. Methods for land use projects. Many projects don't even need a VMT analysis because they're in transportation efficient locations or have other characteristics that make them likely to have low VMT. OPR suggests presuming the following project types to have less than significant impact on transportation, obviating the need for analysis. Residential, office, or retail development within a half mile of transit can be presumed less than significant with a few exceptions listed below. OPR recommends mapping existing low residential VMT areas, as pictured here, as well as low office VMT areas, and presuming those types of projects in those areas less than significant. Locally serving retail, which tends to reduce the distance one needs to travel to shop, can also be presumed less than significant. Small projects that generate or attract fewer than 110 trips per day can be presumed less than significant as well. Residential and office projects add new residents and workers, so those land uses generate and attract new trips. Trip and tour-based approaches are the best methods for assessing VMT from such projects, and they make possible comparison to VMT thresholds connected to the state's science-based GHG emissions reduction targets. OPR recommends analyzing VMT per capita for residential projects and VMT per employee for office projects. Meanwhile, new retail development typically changes existing shopping travel patterns rather than creating brand new shopping trips. Sometimes new retail development provides a shopping option closer to residents and actually reduces driving overall. For this reason, for retail projects, assessing net VMT is the best approach. Net VMT is simply the change in VMT over the area where travel behavior is affected by the project. Net VMT is, in other words, the difference in total VMT with and without the project. OPR also recommends transportation projects be assessed using this approach. For other land uses, generally one or the other of these approaches, trip or tour based or net VMT can be applied. What is meant by a tour based or trip based assessment? Here is an example of a tour based assessment. A resident drives to work, grabbing coffee along the way, over her lunch hour, she drives to a restaurant and then back to the office, and at the end of the day, she drives home. Later in the evening, she drives to a store and then back home again. Each chain of trips originating from home is considered a tour. Here we have two tours. Trips one through five comprise a work tour, which includes stops for coffee and travel to lunch and back. And trips six and seven comprise a shopping tour. All of a household's tours taken together are considered household VMT. Here is an example of a trip-based assessment. Here, a resident drives to work and back, and then drives to grab coffee to a store and back home. Trips one, two, three, and five comprise home-based VMT. A trip-based model can assign these trips back to the home. Meanwhile, trip four is not home-based, and a trip-based model would not be able to tell that it is connected to this home. So home-based VMT is not as comprehensive as household VMT, but it is a sufficient proxy for CEQA purposes, so long as the threshold were also developed using home-based VMT. This is a key point. Consistency between methods used for determining the threshold, assessing the project, and assessing VMT reduction for mitigation all need to be undertaken using comparable methodology. For example, all three should be trip-based or all three should be tour-based to ensure they are apples to apples. OPR recommends basing thresholds of significance on California's science-based emissions reduction targets. Ensuring that current development establishes lower VMT travel patterns will be necessary to achieve long-run climate and air quality targets enshrined in law. For residential development, a threshold of 15% below existing regional or city VMT per capita aligns with those targets. Using region or city as the reference geography allows each jurisdiction to streamline its most e transportation efficient housing development and ensures that reference geography is not drawn strategically to get a permissive threshold. For office development, 
a threshold of 15% below existing regional VMT per employee aligns with those targets. Commute trips to offices are among the longest types of daily trips, often crossing city lines, making a regional reference geography the most appropriate. So long as they are used with the recommended trip or tour-based approaches described previously, use of these thresholds allows the lead agency to ground its significance determination in CARB's assessment of the VMT rates compatible with California's climate law. Retail projects should be assessed with a net VMT approach, again, assessing VMT with and without the project and observing whether the project leads to shopping patterns that create more driving or less driving. If the project would lead to more driving, it may be considered to have a significant impact. OPR recommends presuming locally serving retail less than significant because it tends to provide an additional destination in the urban fabric that reduces driving distances. Regional serving retail, meanwhile, should assess to determine whether it increases or decreases VMT. For mixed use development, consider each use separately, or focus the analysis on the predominant use, and compare to the relevant threshold. OPR recommends against combining land uses because the outcome of a combined analysis may depend more on the particular mix of uses than on their travel efficiency. This would make connecting the significance determination with an environmental policy objective impossible, inhibiting the sequel imperative of identifying a project's significant impacts. Meanwhile, when assessing VMT impacts of each use, or of the dominant land use, credit should be taken for internal capture. For example, VMT analysis of the residences on the upper floors of the development pictured here should take into consideration that some of their trips will go just to the store downstairs and won't add any vehicle travel. Rural development may occur in a wide variety of contexts and may require more flexibility. For rural projects not located in an MPO, thresholds may be chosen on a case-by-case -case basis. OPR has additional information, including detailed guidance, reports, and research pertinent to VMT assessment on its website. Also, the California Air Resources Board has published a document showing the basis for OPR's threshold recommendations, demonstrating their alignment with a scoping plan and thereby the state GHG emissions reduction targets. That document can be found on CARB's website.